Hey everybody, Mike and Ben again from HG Autosport. How's everybody doing on this beautiful Arizona 70 degree evening? Yeah, don't be jealous. Yeah, exactly. We're loving it. What we are doing today is going to Home Depot to get, uh, what? Wire wheels and some metal supplies, some welding stuff. We are in the farm fields of uh, Phoenix area. What, Northwest Phoenix? South. No, South we're, Phoenix. no we're Northwest Phoenix. No, we're not south of Phoenix. Look at... He's wrong. We're in the northwest corner of Phoenix or northern part of Phoenix. All right. So as you can see, the car is, we have the front rotisserie piece off the vehicle right now. We test fitted the engine. That is not exciting in my book. It's just plop it in there, bolt it down, call it good so we can take some measurements. But what we are gonna do, and I'll have Kyle explain this a little bit more later, up in here, this section, as you can see right in there, you see that beam? That is our dash bar. That piece ties both A pillars together and down to the floor. We're gonna tie from those crossbars here to the strut tower. So we're gonna try to come out there into here, but Kyle's got that in his head. Hey guys, so uh, we're just doing a little test fit. Uh, the reason why Tata had to put the engine in is so that uh, we didn't start putting reinforcements in that we wouldn't be able to clear our, our motor with. Uh, we're gonna basically triangulate the strut towers. We're gonna reinforce from this cage, this uh, main, tube here that's the dash bar. We're gonna run up in a kind of V shape to both of the front strut towers. Um, and that'll help brace and stabilize the geometry up here. So as we increase our front spring rates, you know, if we're running arrow, we need to keep the car's ride height more level. Uh, it's gonna put more load through the shock towers. So we really wanna stiffen everything up and uh, make sure that none of these hard points are gonna be moving around. We're not gonna get any stress cracking. Uh, things of that nature. Here is Ben. Make this bar fit in between two other bars at an angle and yeah, been on this for like an hour now. But as you can see, it looks like a beaver went, like a beaver went after that with a buzzsaw. You can't notch a tube for something that complicated any other way besides by hand. So he's gonna have to take his little German teeth and his German angle grinder and just gnaw away at it. Yeah, we have this really neat little tool um we try we have a really complex angle here as you can see we got like five different bars coming in together um at different angles the bar that we need to weld in uh, needs to go in here at a 45 degree angle so what we have is uh this which we found online. It's called Pipe Master. You get it for different uh tubing diameters. Uh what we're using is one and three quarter inch uh OD. And um, what you do is you basically just tack weld pieces of your tubing on here and then um, press these tiny little tabs in the edges. And uh, what comes out is it perfectly replicates your shape that you need to cut out. Uh, and you just mark everything and uh, cut it out. And it should be super easy. Should be. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see here, we've got some additional cage bars that are welded out to these strut towers. So rather than doing a longitudinal bar just straight forward, um, we're actually coming in at an angle, which is hopefully going to stabilize these uh, strut towers left and right uh, for cornering loads. Um, so you'll get a bit more stiffness, um, you know, in cornering where all of this bar is sharing with the bar on the other side of the car. So that's our front reinforcement, and we've got the hole in the firewall blocked off. You can see cage bars are welded out here right in the center. Then we'll come around to the back where we've added this nice new crossbar here. So not only does this help in a, a rollover situation, uh, which we hope to never experience, um, but it also stiffens the chassis uh, in torsion or twisting so that 
you get the maximum stiffness out of these other links here that have already been added. The last uh, structural reinforcement that I wanted to take you through is the rear subframe reinforcements. Uh, a lot of people call it rear subframe, but you're actually reinforcing the mounting location on the chassis um, where the subframe bolts on. As I was talking earlier, this is just one of the reinforcements to the chassis that we did to make sure that the car is nice and tight for all the, the high loads, fast corners that we're gonna throw at it. It consists of uh, four main plates. Some of the kits come with uh, some upper plates, um, but really what the, the goal here is, is to uh, stop uh, the subframe mounts on the chassis side uh, from cracking out. All the E46s have been known to have this issue um, but luckily, especially once you have the car cleaned uh, up to this, uh, this state and all the way apart, uh, it's a pretty easy job to get in here with a proper welder and, uh, and add these plates in. So there's a couple spot welds. Uh, it just surrounds the factory bolt hole um, and spreads that loading out so that it's not placed just on one thin piece of sheet metal, but across a lot of thicker sections. So you've got your, your front mounts for the rear subframe, and then you've got your rear plates right here. So those are, those are in, they're done. Um, everything's ground back flush so that the subframe will mount up perfectly.